In this video, we're going to show you how to use the new parametric seams and stitch construction. I will be demonstrating this in vStitcher, but all of the topics being discussed are relevant to both vStitcher and Lota. We will start with parametric seams. This feature allows you to customize the seam workmanship and thread properties. You can access the built-in seams from the Material Resource Garment tab under Seams. The built-in seams include single needle, double needle, flat lock, chain stitch, and zigzag. All of these seams are vector. You can also find more seams to download using the Material Resources tab under Libraries and choosing Browse Where Libraries. Let's start by customizing a single needle to finish the stitching on this jacket. Selecting the icon, we see our seam customization options in the context menu. At the top, we can adjust our seam color. Under our workmanship options, we can choose how far to offset the seam from the edge or internal line where it is applied. Next, we can choose the line count. Let's make this a two needle. Now that we have two needles, the option for distance is shown and we can set the distance between the needles. Our next option is thread properties. We can set our stitch length in SPI, SPC, or your system measurement preferences. Next, we can choose a width. This option is intended for stitches such as a zigzag or flat lock. We'll come back to this option when we add a bar tack to the pocket. Spacing sets the distance between stitches. This is also connected to your length and width properties. The thickness option can be set in text, ticket, metric, denier, or your system measurement preferences. 3D thickness is a legacy option used to wrap a seam or edge assignable trim around the edge of a garment. I'm using this function on the armhole for the binding. If you are unfamiliar with 3D thickness and would like to experiment with the function, here are some suggestions. For this style, we need a binding from the same material as the garment. To create the binding, we will select the base material diffuse map image editor and use edit externally. Note, this image has been increased by 30% in the image editor. I will need to apply the same amount when we bring the binding image back into vStitcher. In our editor, we will crop the image down to a small size. We can further adjust the width in the vStitcher image editor. We will then add this image as an edge assignable trim. The edge assignable trims have the same new properties as our seams. You can then copy your edge stitch down to the edge assignable trim section. Next, group your stitch with the binding. Here is how the binding looks without 3D thickness. Add the 3D thickness to the binding only. When using 3D thickness, a very small amount is recommended. Here we're adding 0 0.03. Let's go back and finish our pocket by adding a bar tack with a zigzag seam. We can adjust the zigzag to be a bar tack. The last update to review for our parametric seams is the checkbox for auto-generate depth maps. This option adds intensity for specular, roughness, normal, and displacement maps, while also creating a normal and displacement map from the diffuse image. The built-in browser seams all have these additional depth maps. Previewing the seam in V-Ray, the displacement map effect is visible, and we can see the realism this function brings. What if you want to use one of your own custom seams? Seams automatically assign as zero distance from edge. This means the new seam options will not interfere with your current custom seams, but you won't be able to use the new functions. For those of you who would like to use the new functions, let's review how we can update your custom seams. This seam was part of my old seam library. It has a transparent distance from edge and a shadow built into it. With our new seam options, we don't need this distance from edge built in or the shadow seam. Using edit in external software, I will crop the image tightly to a single stitch, then save. This will update my stitch image in vStitcher. We can now use this seam with almost all of the seam properties and thread properties shown before. The only option missing is the thread thickness. Thread thickness is only available for vector seams. We can also use the auto-generate depth maps on our upgraded theme.
Our next topic is stitch construction. Stitch construction uses normal and displacement maps to create the look of an opened, directional, or flat seam. This feature is intended to replace using shadow seams to define a seam edge as well as give detail on intended construction. When you stitch an edge or an internal line, the stitch is automatically assigned as open construction. To adjust the stitch construction, select an edge or internal line. Select the type dropdown in your context menu under stitch construction. Hovering over the stitch construction options, you will see the system highlight the stitch in your 2D window. This seam is an example of an open seam. The seam allowance is pressed open and stitched down on either side of the seam. This seam is an example of a directional seam. The seam allowance is pressed to one side and stitched down. For this seam on a thick denim with two layers of seam allowance on one side, the default depth may not have a strong enough effect. Let's double that effect. We have two additional options under stitch construction. Wash effect adds a wash effect to our seam. Puckering adds the effect of seam puckering. This option has two more controls, depth and width. Depth intensity is controlled with the depth slider. The width slider controls how far from the edge the puckering effect extends into the garment. We have an additional option for this type of seam. The direction button gives us the option to flip the effect to the proper side of the seam as needed. This is an example of a flat seam. This internal line is used to stitch the front placket, causing no indentation on the front pattern piece. This stitch construction would also be used for a garment with a seamless look. When using stitch construction with a multi-stitch, you will see that the full multi-stitch highlights. The stitch construction selected will be used on all edges of this multi-stitch. The effects we see now in the 3D window come from the normal map of the stitch construction and puckering. The second map that stitch construction utilizes is displacement. The second map stitch construction utilizes is displacement. These maps effects are only visible in ray trace renders or the V-Ray preview window. This is important to consider when setting the depth of a stitch construction. Viewing the displacement will increase the intensity of the effect. Let's review these stitch construction options with V-Ray preview. The open seam displacement map creates a valley down the center of the seam with a ridge on either side of the seam. The directional seam displacement map creates a higher ridge on one side of the seam with a quick drop down to the adjacent piece. In this view, you can also see our flat seam has no displacement effects. Let's see what these stitch constructions look like in V-Ray without a wash or puckering effect. Let's add just the puckering back in, but with an increased depth. The stitch construction feature adds so much realism to our 3D garments, but a portion of this feature is only visible in ray trace. Remember, in the 3D window, you are only seeing the effects of the normal map. If you're having trouble seeing the stitch construction effects, review your lighting and preview your garment in V-Ray. It is important to remember to view the garment in V-Ray preview window, specifically the seams and stitch construction, to finalize your garment. The combination of the displacement maps and the increased lighting effects will bring out the detail of your stitch construction. Thank you for joining our Parametric Seams and Stitch Construction webinar. We hope these new features will improve your workflow and enhance your renders.